Well, good morning again, and um, a couple of things I want to share with you, but I want to firstly just read through uh, a scripture. So if you can open your Bibles to John chapter 6, we're going to read, it says 6, 1 to 9, and it's actually 1 to about 14. So um, I'm just going to read this scripture, and I've entitled the message today, Multiplication, and I'm going to explain why, and go over a little bit about our recent trip to the UK, and and uh, what the Lord has showed us during that period. So, so John chapter 6 from verse uh, 1 says this. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a great multitude following him, uh, because, sorry, then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs which he performed on those who were diseased and jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat with his disciples now the passover a feast of the jews was near then jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him he said to philip where shall we buy bread that they may eat but this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, barley loaves and two fish, but what are they amongst so many? Then Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in that place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. Now it doesn't even mention it here, the women and the children. I'm talking about the men only. So you can, you can pretty much multiply that by at least two or three. And Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore, they, they, gathered, they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, this is truly the prophet who is to come into the world why don't we just pray father we want to thank you for today thank you lord for your word for um, just that story of multiplication father we just pray your blessing over mm -hmm. today's message and what i have to share what you've given me in my heart to share with uh, these guys lord i just ask that you would uh, speak to our hearts show us what it is that you would want us to know this morning. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, so while we we're in the UK, um, can you just go back to the original page, please? No, the original page. But, so while we're in the UK, um, the Lord really showed us a number of different things. I'm going to show you a few slides, a few pictures of just some of the stuff that we, that we did whilst we were there. But... One of the things that really impressed upon me was this story about feeding of the 5,000. You know, to, to coin a phrase that um, Dallas Jenkins uses on The Chosen, he, where he says that, um, talking about feeding the 5,000, he says that it's not our job to feed the 5,000. It's our job to supply the loaves and the fish. Now, the interesting thing about the multiplication about the 5,000 that Jesus fed with five loaves and two fish, is that Jesus didn't need five loaves and two fish. It had nothing to do with what was the five loaves and the two fish. I mean, it could have been one loaf and one fish. It could have been one fish. It could have been a half a loaf. But what Jesus wanted was what this young boy had. All of it. And that's what he's asking from each and every one of us. He's asking us, give me what you've got. Because I, with what, I can multiply what you have 
to feed 5,000 and more. So whatever it is that we have in our, in our hands, God wants to use. You know, this is the interesting thing. I, you know, most people in this place know my stance on the word tithing. I don't like it. I'll be honest. It's not, it's not something that I use. Does, it, does that mean I don't, I don't believe in giving? No. I don't believe, I absolutely believe in giving. But I think what happens is when we concentrate on the word tithe, which is an Old Testament teaching, it restricts us. Look, quite frankly, the, the word tithe, the church today, um, I believe, has misconstrued that word. The word tithe, for argument's sake, in today's modern church, people say 10%, one tenth of what you have to give to the church. But in reality, if we were to really tithe as the Jews tithe, as they did in Melchizedek, as they did in the Old Testament, it's actually more like 22 to 23%. It's actually not 10, it was never 10. But just say, for example, God the Father said, I'm going to tithe Jesus to you. How would we feel if he other gave us 10% of Jesus? In today's modern society, modern church life. That's why the word, for me, I don't like using the word tithe. Then you'll never actually hear me ever preach a tithing message. I just won't. I refuse. I won't even preach a giving message. Because Paul says in the, in the New Testament, he says that we are to be a cheerful giver. Not by coercion. And I think, unfortunately... The body of Christ today, the modern day church, we hear far too much on giving than we do on teaching the actual scripture. You know, I've been in churches and you've probably been in the same where they've had tithing messages longer than the actual teaching message. Yeah. And that's heart wrenching. Now, if, if, please don't misinterpret what I'm saying here. Because I know that people tithe to this church, and I'm very grateful we are. And, and if that's your conviction, that's totally fine. Don't ever feel that what I'm saying is gospel. You, this is something that you have to decide between you and God. So the giving part about what you give to this church or any thing that the Lord tells you to do, is between strictly between you and God. You'll never be coerced by us. Mm. I digress. The reason that I'm, I wanted to talk about multiplication is because, so while we, whilst we're in the UK, um, we had a chance to do a few different things. We firstly we went to um, uh, Oxford, and it's a beautiful town absolutely gorgeous place and we went to this place called the Abbey Now, this building for us is, yeah if you can so this building um, this building was over 800 years old over 800 years old get that around your head our country is about 250 years old quite you know civilized so that's it there so that's this building Mm -hmm. So you see Andy and Zoe are friends and their kids and, oh, and not no no go back just leave it there for a second. Yeah. So we go and we introduce our reboot program, which is our trauma recovery program that we do with um, PTSD resurrected and our charity at the art. So we go and introduce. We had a day there with these people and see that that's actually son. See look this. See Eden here. She's they had son. It was really interesting. We didn't have much son while we were there. We we're there four weeks. There wasn't a lot of that yellow stuff in the sky over there, but, but there was a little was a bit. This, this, yeah, there was a lot of rain. But this particular day we had sun. But as you can see, we still had a jumper on, scarf and coat because it was freezing. Mm. I'm telling you, it was probably about seven or eight degrees that day. But this building here has so much history in it. But it's been laid to waste for years. And what these people are trying to do, these guys, this guy here and... Um, and these guys here, and a couple other ladies. This, this lady here, beautiful lady. We got to pray with her. She has cancer, and um, she's not a believer. 
but she allowed us to lay hands on her and pray for her. And, and we had such a beautiful sense of the Holy Spirit around her. She's a gorgeous woman, really lovely lady. So please be praying for her. Claire, her name is. She's a really lovely lady. But she's one of the, the directors of this place. And what they want to do is they want to have something for their community to break them free from trauma. So let me get back to the multiplication. So here they are. They've got something in their hand. And what they want to do is they want to use what, what God's given them in their hand. And they want to multiply. That's their loaves and fish. They want to multiply what God's given them. And they want to use what God's given us to service their community. So from there we went um, and spent some time with Zen's sister and uh, and husband and, and son and we had a great time. Got to do a bit of family stuff and um, meet some old friends, which were great. And then we got to go to places like Bath. Darling, we can just flick through. We went to a beautiful yeah. spot. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Yeah. Just, just, yeah, so that's Bath. That's like absolutely beautiful. The heritage in some of these places was extraordinary. Steve actually a couple of times was great. We, we, Steve called us on, on uh, FaceTime and, and we were driving a couple of times. He just happened to catch us while we were in the car. So we turned the, the, the phone around and he was seeing the scenery we was drive, as we were driving through Somerset. And the, like, it's seriously God's country. It's beautiful. And it just so happened that the two times that Steve called us again, the sun was out. Which was really bizarre. So out of the four Major weeks, yeah, G, G just needed that. That's right, G, Steve needed a call more. So this particular day, we went to Bath. We met our friends Andy and Zoe there because they'd been to Scotland and they did some stuff up in Scotland with their kids. And they came back to Bath. And Bath is just a stunning place. Just flick again if you can. Yeah. And you'll see this, and like the architecture. I could listen, seriously, I could have walked around this town for, for, for days. The architecture and the history is extraordinary. Keep going, mate. Keep going. That's Western Supermare. So that's that's Zine's hometown. And again, blue sky. Yeah, blue no sky. And and strangely enough, <laughs> see this here? This is not normal. It's Western Supermare, and for, for those that are watching in the UK, uh, it's commonly known and affectionately known as actually Western Super Mud. Because oh. nor so normally this tide is here. Let's, oh. let's, like that amount of water that's there, right? Within one hour, it goes from there. That we missed it. Like we we, we were like in ten minutes that we were there, it went from here to there. Within an hour, it'd be up towards the end of that pier. It's got one of the the, the second the second largest tidal change in the world. It's extraordinary how quickly it goes out. So for, for the most part, it comes in obviously twice a day. So twice a day for about five minutes. Literally, for about five yeah, minutes, the, 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 the water's there. And then it goes, and it, before you blink, it goes out. Cool. You go again in, things. So this was a, a church in a little place called um, wow. Wells. Beautiful. Look at the architecture inside this building. But it was originally in a Catholic church, and then the Church of England took it over. Here you go. No, that's the end of the no, no, they go back. Here you go. Oh, there's one right at go, the beginning. Go right, right at the beginning. Okay. Oh, too far. Oh, here you go. It's too right. You can go through all that. Here you go. Sorry. Get through it. There we go. So just leave it on that now. But the highlight of our trip was this course we did in Wales. So we went to this church. So this was, there were 17 participants on this reboot course. And the interesting thing was, normally when we do one of these reboot courses, we, we, we suggest anywhere between 10 and 15 people nice intimate um, number and Joel um, who is here this is Zine's uncle beautiful man and that's Zine's grandmother that's Joel's mum Helen and normally as I said the, the courses are run between 10 and 15 people we contacted Joel and said listen how are the numbers going and he said oh 50 <laughs> And in fact, the day before, it was up to 61 that actually registered for the course. 61 people. 
So we prayed so, about so it. So we prayed about it. We thought, okay, well, the, the ones that are supposed to be there will be there. And as it turned out, 17 turned up. Um, something had happened and a whole bunch of people couldn't turn up. And... But the interesting thing we found is that the 17 people that were meant to be there were there. So just to give you a bit of history about this church, this building. So this building, again, is probably over a thousand years old. But the, you've all probably heard of the Welsh Revival. So back in the turn of the, the last century, 1904, there was a massive Christian revival in Wales, which is, is well, well documented. And this particular building was one of the original churches that was involved in the Welsh Revival. And let me tell you something. When we walked into that building, we could literally feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. It was like the prayers of the saints were embedded in the walls of that building. And it, we could tangibly feel it. So we thought, this is going to be one interesting cause. So as I said, there were 17 people there. And I'm not going to point this particular guy out, but there was one guy there that was a Muslim. Our courses are Christian courses. They're faith-based courses. But there was a Muslim that came along. And just so happened that he was there because his business partner as a Christian was also a pastor. The business partner is a Christian. And what they do is he's an, they're both ex-policemen. And um, they, are, they wanted to take this course themselves and start facilitating it in the UK. So they came along to basically just look at what we do. And the course goes for three days. So we'd start about nine o'clock in the morning and then we'd go through, have a tea break, um, then break for lunch for about 45 minutes and then finish about two o'clock. That's how it went. And then we'd do a graduation on the end of the third day. Let me just reiterate what I started with. It's not our job to feed the 5,000. It's just to provide the loaves and fish. And you know what? So what we did is we, so Andy, our mate Zoe, where's Zoe? Is she there? Oh, they're right beside her. Zoe, Zine and I facilitated this course together. We brought our loaves and fish. That was our hearts. Nothing else. And here, these guys, they were the 5,000 that God had given us. It wasn't our job to feed the 5,000. Our job was to bring the loaves and the fish. So we brought it. Mm. Uh, let me tell you something. What happened in those three, that three days was nothing short of extraordinary. These people, every single one of them, every one of them have stories to tell of their own. Traumatic stories. We heard some heart-wrenching stuff. Stuff that would just break your heart. But by the end of the three days, we saw such immense difference in every single one of them. There was a, a lady that was there at the very beginning of the course. She's actually not there. She couldn't turn up on the final day because she had a doctor's appointment. But at the beginning of the course, she could see how broken she was. So much so that she wouldn't even talk. On the beginning of the second day, you saw her standing up, dancing. God was moving. And I'm telling you, the presence inside that building was tangible. You know, I can tell you that on two occasions where this has happened to me. Like I'm a pastor and I'm, I believe in the gifts of the Spirit. I'm very much about the fivefold ministry. I believe that the fivefold ministry today is very much in effect. And we should be, we should be um, encouraging people just like you watching or like people in here to be exercising the gifts that God's given us. It's not our job to feed the 5,000. It's, it's our job is to provide the loaves and the fish. Maybe that loaves and the fish for you is, the, is the, the gifting that God's given you. 
So, this is what happened. On the final day, what, what happens during these courses is on the final day, we do this thing called tell your story. So for, so, so for the first two days, we teach on what it is for different types of trauma. We talk about forgiveness. Zena gives a testimony via a video, which is incredibly powerful. Annie and Zoe tell their testimony during the telling the story part. And then there's, then there's teaching through the, the, the different facets of what it is for trauma and how to overcome it and what Jesus said that, you know, in the scriptures and about healing and so forth. And then on the third day, we tell these guys, okay, you got an hour, go away, some corner of space, and write your story. You've got 10 minutes to tell it. It doesn't have to be all-encompassing. It doesn't have to be explicit. And this is what happened. So everyone went and did that. With one of the guys that was there, again, I won't tell you who it is because I want to try and keep as much of this as sensitive because a lot of this stuff is very sensitive, right? One of these guys that was there said, firstly, when we came to the forgiveness part, he said, I'm not going to be able to do this. He said, I won't be able to forgive my father. We said, that's all right. You don't have to. But just walk the journey with us and see what happens. And generally what happens is that during the forgiveness part, we have this, this exercise that we do where we talk about, we write, get a bit of paper and we write on one side of the paper all the people that we've, we believe in our heart, what the Lord tells us in our heart that all the people we need to forgive yeah. and then on the opposite side of the bit of paper we write what we need to forgive ourselves for mm. you know some of the things that, that 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 we people struggle with is sometimes it's easy enough to forgive somebody else maybe not so much to forgive yourself and like steve had said earlier when we were doing worship he quoted Psalm 103 where, you know, we, we talk so often about it here. Where the Lord says, I take your sin and I throw it as far as the east is from the west. I throw it into the sea of forgetfulness and I remember it no more. He forgives us and forgets. Unfortunately, we don't have that capacity as humans. We don't have that capacity to be able to completely forget hurt. And that's therein lies trauma. And that's what happened here. But that young man who couldn't, he said, there's no way in the world I could forgive. Through tears, he read out a statement of forgiveness for his father. Powerful. Mm. So powerful. Then come, tell your story day. He goes, I just want to let you know, he called me over in the morning. And he said, look, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, past this but I, I, I won't be able to do this and we said it's okay man it's fine just do the exercise write it out it'll be very cathartic for you just to simply write your story out you don't have to tell it and we said to everybody look this is not a necessity it's the, this is no there's no right or wrongs in any of this but if you want to do it do it we, we've found over the times that we've been doing these courses and Andy and Zoe said that like this is probably about a 30 odd course that they've done so there's a lot of experience here and there's been such incredible healing for thousands of people with the courses that they've done so anyway there's a fellow there pastor guy ex-copper he very funny man he's a really funny guy he gets up and he leads first and his story was brilliant and he said he said through his story just he never expected this course to impact him the way that it did. He never expected God to do what God was doing during these three days. And like I said earlier, I, I alluded to the fact that God did something with me on that day that he's only ever done twice. Zina and I did, you know, we've done some ministry work, you know, before we travelled to Fiji and we've travelled to, to Indonesia to do ministry. And one time while we were in Indonesia, 
Zine had given her story in front of a bunch of Indonesians who couldn't speak English. There was about 70 like, people in this building. We had a translator translating Zina's testimony. Somebody else had got up and preached a message. And then we had an altar call for people that would come for prayer. And, you know, unlike, you know, dare I say, in Australian or, you know, Western churches, when people come for prayer, you might have a whole church building full of people and you'd be very lucky to get half a dozen people that would have the guts to come forward to actually have the the people pray for them. You know that every single one of those people turned up, bar about three, and when we were in Indonesia to pray for them. They were so hungry for a word from God. And eventually, strangely enough, once everybody had left, those three came up to Zen and I and asked us to pray for them after. So every single person that were there asked to be prayed for. But this is what happened when I was in Indonesia, when we were in Indonesia. Whilst we're there, all these people lined up and I said to this other guy that was there with us, I said, what are we going to do with this? I'd never experienced this before. We had about 70 odd people lined up across this building, all waiting to be prayed for. He said, well, you start up that end. I'll start up that end and we'll meet in the middle. I had no idea what I was doing, I've got to tell you. I had no idea. But my job isn't to feed the 5,000. My job is to bring the loaves and the fish, to bring what I had, and God would multiply it. So I started laying hands on these people, and God gave me a picture and a vision and a word for every single one of them. I was blown away. I'm, I'm praying in the spirit over these people, and these people are understanding me. I'm gobsmacked. This is the God we serve. I'm praying in the spirit. And these Indonesians who could not understand my language are understanding words that I'm saying to them and they're falling down and their heart and they're coming back on their knees. I got to this one woman who was pregnant. And she was also carrying a baby. She had a baby in one of those straps and she was pregnant again. And I, there was a translator there, a friend of ours. And I, and I said to her, I said, Tina, can you just come over here? I've got, I've got such a strong word for this woman. So I spoke in English to this woman. And the Lord had showed me that she came from a Muslim family. She had three brothers that had outcasted her because she was born again. And the Lord showed me this. How how would I know? I didn't know. Everything I was saying was true. Tears were pouring out of her eyes. But the Lord showed me that those three brothers were going to get saved. And they they were all coming to the Lord, all of them. This woman just collapsed on the floor in tears. On the final day of this course, everybody's getting up and they all start telling their story. It wasn't my job to bring to feed the five thousand. My job was to provide the loaves and the fish. I didn't even know I had loaves and fish. I'm sitting down. This man, Winston, beautiful bloke, ex-policeman. Really gorgeous man, man of God. He starts and starts talking, gives his story. I'm not going to share any of his story. It's not my story, it's his to tell. And all of a sudden, God gives me a picture for him. Hey? Yeah. God gave me a picture for him. And a word for him that apparently was spot on. And then everybody that followed him, every single person that got up and told their story, including the man that said he couldn't do it, told his story in tears, including the Muslim guy 
that was there. And he's, interestingly enough, when it came to that man that was not a believer, the Muslim man, Andy had asked someone to pray over him after he'd given his story. And God just impressed upon me so strongly. I felt compelled, I had to go and say something. But I didn't want to actually interrupt the other guy praying. And I said, look, excuse me, but I, I, there's something I've just got to say. I, was, I, I, couldn't do, I could not. It was, I was so compelled to speak into this man's life. And the Lord showed me that not only was this man going to be born again, he showed me that he had a, a Peter anointing on him. He was going to be a fisher of men. And I spoke into him with tears rolling down my face. Tears welled up in his eyes. This is a Muslim. He kept referring to Jesus as Christ. He knew that he was Mashiach. He knew that he was the Messiah. Well, I'm, and I'll tell you, I can keep going on and on and I'm not going to because it's time for me to close, but I just wanted to share some brief amounts of what actually went on. Because it's not our job to feed the 5,000. It's just to supply the loaves and the fish. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So if I can encourage you in anything at all, don't think for one minute that you're not worthy enough to bring the loaves and the fish. That story that we read there in John chapter 6 was this little fella, young bloke, in a crowd filled with 5, 10, 15,000 people. He brought to Jesus all that he had. Five barley loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, I can do something. What have you got? What have you got to bring? Don't say you've got nothing because you have. It's only got to be the smallest of small things. I'm telling you right now, you, you know my stance on this. We're in the last of the last days. I know we are. Time's short. Don't waste a microsecond. We have got so many people that we can use what God's given us to use. You know, I, when I was in that place, I had this sense of aboding, a sense of just amazing feeling of the Holy Spirit because it had such history in there. My cry to the Lord is bring revival mm. in my lifetime, Lord. I want to see it. Amen. Do you want to see it? Yeah, sure. Well, why not now, God? Why not us? Why not use us? Why not use us to ignite something huge in our own communities? In this great land, south land of the Holy Spirit. Why not here? There's so many that need to know the love of Christ. Why not us and why not now? Amen. Why not we pray? Father, we want to bless you. We call upon your Holy Spirit, Lord, to, to start afresh in us. Start afresh in our community, our state our nation ignite Lord your spirit that, the, that a revival will be cast upon our nation Father bring what was dead to life we know God that we don't need to feed the 5,000 that's your job we just need to bring what we've got just our own loaves and fish our own insecurities our own little talents and gifts that you've given us. We bless you, Father, and we thank you that you do the multiplication. Multiply what we give you, God. Just give us the, the kick up the butt that we need to do the supplying.
and you'll do the multiplying. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, God.